Have you ever wondered what a flight director is, how it works, how it works with your autopilot, how, how it works with your GPS, and all that uh, other stuff? Um, well, Bob has uh, had some big questions uh, based on uh, the climb and descent on autopilot uh, video I did a while back, so we're going to answer those questions today on Flyware. I'm Scott Perdue, and today on Flyware we're going to talk about uh, flight directors and autopilots and uh, uh, GPS's and all that kind of stuff. And Bob here had a question about the climb and descent on autopilot video I did uh, a while back and how it applies to his autopilot. So, uh, welcome, Bob. Well, thanks, Scott. Uh, a question. I have more than a question. Okay. Um, cool. You know, flying the airplane was pretty easy, but figuring the uh, the king autopilot and flight director out was was is, is still an ongoing. Con sure. Concern. One uh, full disclosure here: uh, this A36 has a KFC 200 King autopilot, and I have a, K uh, a GTN 750 uh, Navigator with Aspen dual Aspen setup. Bob has the same thing, uh, same kind of airplane uh, and the 750, but he has and the KFC 200, but he has a G500 instead of the Aspen. But yeah. So, so the. Uh I guess the, the, the most interesting thing that I asked myself, and, and, and I found out a lot of other people asked the same question, is what is the difference between an autopilot and a uh, flight director? And how do the two interface? That's a, that's a really good question, and uh, often misunderstood in reality is you, you need an autopilot that's capable of providing a flight director. Uh, there's a lot of autopilots out there, STEC 30, STEC 50, uh, some of the, uh, the lower kings uh, that just are an autopilot. So you need an autopilot with brains enough to do a flight director. And what a flight director is, is uh, sometimes there are V-bars or bat wings where they have uh, these little bat wings and you try to fly your V in to meet those bat wings. Some of them are uh, just uh, lines and you try to make the lines cross exactly right. Uh, it, that the flight director, what it does is it takes steering information from the navigator whether it's from a VOR and ILS, or the, the signal, or it is from a GPS, it takes that signal and says, you are this far off the heading to intercept and fly and track that course, and you're this far off on altitude, and the, v, the bat wings will orient themselves, so if you put your little airplane, your little V in there, uh, you're gonna fly to that course, and then you're gonna follow the course down. So a flight director gives you course guidance, vertically and laterally, uh, but it has to have that information from something. In most of the cases we're talking about here, it is from uh, it is from your GPS. People use most things to be your ILS, uh, but it, your autopilot has to be fancy enough, has to be able to use utilize the flight director. Well, a couple of things that I discovered early on is that uh, the, the best way that I described it to myself was the Autopilot is the muscle, and uh, I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, the autopilot is the muscle and the flight director is the brains. So, so, you know, one of the things that I also realized is that when my airplane was built in 1985, we didn't know what GPS was. It, we've taken that for granted. So, so since uh, uh, I purchased my airplane and I'm looking at the, the operating manual for the, for the autopilot, and I'm looking at the G500 book, I finally realized that there's a real big disconnect in there, and, and that's what started my questions with you yesterday. But when my airplane was built, we didn't know what GPS, aviation GPS, or even automotive GPS was at the time. Um, so so there's, there's big gaps there. So that's what's pretty much caused this video. I know all, all of the viewers that have the Aspen, there's really good resources uh, on, on, on YouTube for how that operates but I can't find anything on YouTube or, 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 or any of the other sites that describes how to interface the King, how to, how to, how to, manage. How to manage the King with the Garmin 500. So, so what, what we're gonna do is, on this video, I'm gonna explain how the Aspen works, and uh, I'm gonna intersperse some of the things about the Aspen, et cetera, uh, but uh, then we're gonna go fly his airplane, uh, and we'll do a video on that. So just on the G500, and the autopilot, pre-select pre the output. So we'll do that. But we, have, we don't have any footage for that. I already have footage for the Aspen. 
So, well, a couple of comments is uh, the Aspen I have has to have it's digital, and the KFC 200 and earlier autopilots are analog. So, be able to to, to uh, uh, translate digital to analog, you need an extra box. And the Aspen uses a box called the A100 that translates the GPS signal going to the Aspen, and then the Aspen translates all that to analog and send it to the autopilot. So that's how it drives that. Um, your uh, G500 does it through a GAD43E. Yes. So you have a box as well. Yes, I recognize that piece of equipment, yeah. The cool thing about the GAD, the GAD43E, is that it gives you vertical speed and it gives you out to increase the weight. <laughs> Garmin, of course, requires you to pay some money to activate that. So to, to activate which one? Both of them. So uh, if you haven't got get 43E and you didn't pay the money to activate it, you're not going to get out to pre-select. You're not going to get uh, vertical speed. You just, I think it's uh, going right right now. It's 2,700 bucks to activate that, and it's all software. It's just an unlock code that allows your system then to use the information and provide it to the autopilot. Oh, that, that's interesting. So I have the GAD 43. So if I and I don't know if it's unlocked or not. I guess we're going to find we're out. We're going to find out when we go fly his airplane. But why would somebody install the GAD 43 and not unlock the software? Uh, because that's software. the only way to talk to the KFC 200. So, so it, 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 it will talk from a standpoint that it'll do heading uh, and it'll do, uh, it'll do nav tracking, but it won't necessarily do pre-select altitude or... That's right. The, the way they did it is you have to pay them a little extra money to have that selection to be able to do that through pre-select and, uh, and vertical speed. Really cool things to have. And they thought, well, if you're going to do this, you might as well pay another 2700 bucks for that cool stuff. Well, that's pretty interesting. You know, all, all these months of wrestling with it and now, now to discover that. So maybe this is a good thing for, for, for everybody that has the Garmin and has the, uh, yeah, we'll the King. See, we'll see when we go fly his airplane. Talk about my airplane real quick. Um, I had to put another box in because the EA100 converts the digital information from the, the, the uh, navigator that goes to the uh, Aspen, and it, the Aspen box converts it to analog, and that drives the autopilot. So it can do, uh, it can track a heading, it can track a course, uh, all that kind of stuff, <coughs> and maintain altitude. The Aspen's driving, but well, it won't do altitude pre-select, and it won't do vertical speed. Even though the Garmin 500 has that feature, I can go into it and I can do altitude pre-select, okay. and I can arm that. So you probably have vertical speed as well. Say in mine, it does not. It does not allow me to go vertical speed on mine, but it does so allow me to arm altitude select. So maybe one of them is activated. Maybe one's one not, of them is activated. We'll find out. Yeah. So I had to, I had to actually buy an extra box. It's called the ASP four A, and uh, it's made by some guys from Germany. Uh, what it does is in the Aspen, you pre-select the altitude. That you're going to, and that's the way it works in the G500. And that's the way it works on mine. I think. Just like the altitude, and uh, then the way I do it in the in the in the my autopilot is, is I got the flight director, I got the heading selected. Once I have manually set my climb rate, in other words, I'm not climbing 800 feet per minute or whatever it is. I manually set that. I've got my speed, and I pre pre selected my altitude, and the box has a little switch. You can see it on the video that says altitude, and you just hit that, and now that box, that ASP4A, is listening for the altitude alert from the Aspen. I engage the autopilot, and the autopilot flies the airplane up until it hears that box, hears the uh, warning for, hey, I'm going to hit the altitude. When it hits the altitude, then what it does is it sings, sends the altitude hold button, or altitude hold signal, to the autopilot and activates altitude. I, and I've discovered on my Bonanza with my G500 and the KFC 200 that just like you, I climb out, and when I get to the altitude that I want to hold, I reach over to the controller, and I simply hit the ALT button, and, and it, it accepts whatever barometric pressure is at that point, and that's where the airplane stops at. Okay, so what you're saying is to me, i got to go fly this airplane, what you're saying is to me that you don't have altitude pre -selection. I, I don't have that option on the G500. That's yeah. correct. So you're doing it manually. 
But what I'm saying is that if you want to spend 2,700 bucks, you can have that. Yeah. So, but anyway, what we'll find is that we'll fly his airplane and uh, we'll do a video that shows all these different modes on the G500 and the KFC 200. But uh, you've seen it. Uh, I had the video from the Aspen and uh, my KFC. And that's what caused all my questions to you as I looked at your video on the Aspen and said, you know, what about us guys that have the KFC 200? And that's what prompted this video. Okay, cool. The uh, Garmin has some really cool autopilots out, the GFC 500 and the 600, both of which are uh, certified for the Bonanza now. Uh, for a long time, it was just the 600, which is a much more expensive autopilot. Uh, the G500 is now certified for the, for the A36. It's certified for uh, other retails and things, the, the straight tails as well, uh, much earlier, but it just recently, a few months back, got certified for the A36. As far as I know, the big difference between them is uh, there's a few modes that are different, but the G600 servos are more robust than the G500 servos. So that means that G600, you'd have to pull out all the KFC equipment? Oh, yeah, all the KFC 200 stuff's got to go. put the Garmin in. put the Garmin stuff in. And we're talking for the G600, you're 35, 40 grand. Wow. Yeah, so wow. by doing the G500 and the Aspens, we got rid of the old uh, uh, gyros that came with the KFC 200, which were problematic. Uh, mine had a problem, and it was going to cost me $6,000 to overhaul the gyro. Aspen wow. was like 1500 bucks, $2,000 more than that. So now I just do away with those whole, whole gyro issue. And that's what you did as well. Yep. So yep. You bought the airplane that way. Right, so right. That's essentially what uh, what you did as well. So as long as we can keep the KFC 200 working. Yeah, yeah. And, and I understand there's a lot of availability parts. You know, I just scrambled through uh, eBay and, and I see it looks like there's a, a lot of components that are still out there. Uh, um, I don't want to use the word yellow tag, but uh, serviceable. And, uh, and, uh, and hopefully I can keep it running. For a while. Me too, because I've already spent my money on other other things. Other, other things like gas. <laughs> like that gas. <laughs> like gas. Well, I guess we better go fly. Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's drag it out and go fly. All right. All right. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. And if you have a question that I didn't answer uh, or that Bob didn't ask, uh, leave me a comment. I, I'd love to, to hear what you have to say. And thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you did if you liked it, and uh, hit the bell if you want to get notified of the next video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. I'm